OK. We'll do 720. All right, listen up, please. I don't got a lot of time for this. Um, so what I want to do now is show you how do you find your solution point. So it says plot additional solution points as needed, right? So how do we do that, Marco? Well, the main important thing we need to do is determine our, our horizontal and asymptotes. So we look at, we found the x-intercept was at negative 1. Then we determined we have a horizontal asymptote at 0. We have a vertical asymptote at 0. And we have a vertical asymptote at 4. OK? So your graph looks something like this. These are at least your asymptotes. Remember, asymptotes, ladies and gentlemen, are going to be, Jonathan, where your graph approaches. So these lines, Kelsey, are where going to be your graph approaches these lines as it goes to infinity and negative infinity. Now, what does the graph look like? I'm not going to be spending our time graphing them. I want you guys to put them in your calculator and graph them up, and we'll look at them. However, I do want you to show me that you can find the two, two solution or your solution points. So how do you find your solution points? The points I want you to do that will help you understand the graph is to um, pick two points to the left and right of every asymptote, all right? vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote. So what we'll do is we'll just do an xy table. All right, so let's pick two points to the left of 0. Well, we already know negative 1, right? So that one works. Um, and then let's do negative, let's do negative, uh, let's do negative one, and then let's do negative two. Okay. Then let's take two points to the right. How about we do one and three? And then we need to do two points to the right of this asymptote. Let's do four and five. Huh? On four? It's on four. I'm sorry, five and six. Thank you. So now I need to find the values of each one. Well, how do you find the values for each one of these solution points? Well, if you have a calculator, you can easily just go to your table function and, and provide it. If you don't have a calculator, you need to plug them all in. So you do f or sorry g of negative 1 equals 4 times negative 1 plus 4 divided by negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1. Okay, So that becomes negative 4 plus 4. Yeah. Automatically, you don't even need to do the bottom, right? It's 0. Um, which we already knew, because that was your y-intercept. Negative 2, do the same thing. 4 times, four times negative 2 is negative 8, plus 4 is negative 4. Then we have negative 2 squared, which is positive 4, minus negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. So you have 4 plus 8, which would be 12. So you have negative 4 divided by um, 12, which would be a negative 1 third. All right. Do you guys see what, how I'm doing all these? I'm just plugging it in into there. But for the video, I need to hurry it up. So um, we'll just do uh, negative 2. Oh, that's a positive 4. What am I doing? That's negative. No, that's a negative 8. Where did I make? Is that right in there? I got negative 2 is 12. Negative 12. Negative 2 in for x is negative 8 plus 4 is a negative 4. And then on the bottom is going to be 4 squared, negative 2 squared, which is 4 minus 4 times negative 2. Yes? Why always approach the dotted line but never was on the dotted line? It's not always the case. For your horizontal asymptotes, we'll go over cases. What you guys got to remember, asymptote is where it approaches. All right? So, it can go like this, all right? And let me just kind of explain something. Um, your horizontal y equals 0. It could go like this. <coughs> Does this graph still approach this dotted line? As it goes to infinity, that's why we're talking about those definitions. As this graph goes to negative infinity, does it approach this line? So it's OK that it crosses it, because as it goes to infinity, it approaches the line. Does that make sense? That's the definition of an asymptote, that it approaches that line as it goes to infinity or negative infinity. Now, you are maybe concerned about a vertical asymptote. That is, it cannot, it cannot be evaluated at a vertical asymptote, because if it, was, if it did cross the vertical asymptote, that means it'd be a value at that vertical asymptote, right? Well, if it's a value at 0, then you can't have a value at 0, though, because it's undefined at 0. 
right? So your vertical asymptotes, it can never cross a vertical asymptote because then it'd be a because your function is not valued at zero. So if it crosses the vertical, you did something wrong. Yes. It it's okay. It's, it's possible. Yes. What about so by that definition, that means that that line, all of the numbers, all the way up to the tip of the uh, tip of the curve, there are all going to be an asymptote thing because they're all approaching infinity, but they're just It's the end behavior of the graph. As the end behavior of the graph, as my x values of my function go to negative infinity, if it approaches this asymptote, it's a this is a horizontal asymptote. I'll put back up the formal definition, and we'll go through it again so you guys can have it. But the definition is, as this graph goes to the left, as it approaches this line, that line is a horizontal asymptote. It doesn't matter if it crosses it or not. As long as it, as it goes to infinity, it approaches that line, it's an asymptote. Yes? So you can take any random number on the x-axis and put it in and solve for it? Like, or I, like want you to choose two point, I want you to choose two points to the left of your vertical asymptotes and two points to the right of your vertical asymptotes. OK? That's how you find the points. For all of them, yes. Um, if I just go ahead and use my plot, which I don't have negative 1 third, I have, well, let me check. 4 times x plus 1, oh, no wonder. I was wondering what you did. You didn't put in your inserts. <coughs> guys, make sure um, when you guys put in your, when you guys put in your, um, when you guys put in your functions, make sure that you put parentheses around them or you're not going to get the correct graph. All right? So let's look at what this, my negative 2 is negative 1 third, as I did it correctly. 1 is going to be negative 2.66, which will be negative 2 thirds. We have 3, which is at negative 5.33, which is a third. Um, let's go down to positive 5, which is 4.8. And 6, which is 2.33, which is 2 and a third. So this isn't what the graph looks like. Let's go and take a look at what the graph looks like. At negative 1, it's 0. At negative 2, it's negative 1 third. So at negative 2, it's negative 1 third. Yes? Can you graph it from now? No. You're just plotting this. You're just finding out what the solution points are. OK? But I'm showing you what the graph would look oh. like so you guys can see it. That's what these solution points are. But I'm not expecting you guys to graph it. Uh, for 1, it's negative 2.66. So you go down. So at 1, you're going down to negative 2.66. And our next point was at 3, which is negative 5. So 1, 2, 3 is down at 3, 4, 5. Is somewhere right there. And what was our other two points? 5, we said, was at 4.8. So I go over to 5, and I go up for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 somewhere like that. And then we said 6 was at 2.33. So at 6, we're down only up to 2.33. OK, so what does our graph look like? All right. Now, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not asking you to graph it. Um, what I'm doing is I'm asking you guys to just plot your solution points. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you're going to have to plug it in and find each value. However, you guys can see what this graph is going to look like. So it's going to go like this. Okay, That's what the graph looks like as you guys would graph it in your graphing calculator. Does each of these lines approach my asymptote? Yeah, you can see these lines are getting approached as you go from infinity to negative infinity. It approaches my asymptotes. All right? So that's it for that.